Uh, so seafood fraud is basically selling a cheaper seafood product as a more expensive seafood product. There's a, a lot of different ways that that can be done. Um, the most common way is to basically just label it differently. So you could take something like a tilapia fillet, which is relatively cheap, and you could label it as red snapper and sell it for a lot more money, right? So that's, that's sort of the most common and most well-known form of seafood fraud. Um, but there are other forms where you actually have to change the product to make it look, the cheaper product to make it look more expensive. Uh, so for instance, on salmon farms, sometimes they might put dyes in the feed to make the, the farm salmon flesh look pinker so that they can sell it as wild caught salmon. So that's another kind of seafood fraud. And then the third kind of fraud is basically where you pretend like your fish came from one place when it really came from another. And usually that's to avoid uh, regulations. Yeah, so it's really hard to know. Um, there have been a lot of studies recently w using DNA technology to basically tell the species level seafood fraud. So they use, you know, they've tested lots and lots of samples from uh, markets and other places where fish are being sold. And they found that between 38 and 55 percent of the seafood that's being sold in those areas is being sold as a different species. Um, and that's, I think, 38 percent for the United States, up to 55 for the UK. Uh, but those other types of seafood fraud that I talked about are much harder to track and much less well understood. What we know is that it is a big problem uh, and this, that what we can document is just a drop in the bucket uh, compared to what's probably happening out there. Well, so governments on their own really can't fight seafood fraud. So there's actually a lot of regulations internationally that do quite well in terms of, of quality of seafood and human health. If we really want to get rid of seafood fraud, or at least reduce it substantially, you need that same kind of cooperation between industry, consumers, and government to basically work together to identify uh, fraudulent actors to make supply chains much more transparent. And that's where businesses in particular can come in. And if you don't have the corporations cooperating, then the government can't help. The other side of this is the criminal element side. So for instance, Interpol has a project scale, which has been going on for about 10 years now, where they work to coordinate policing across multiple different countries to try to catch both illegal seafood uh, production and seafood fraud more broadly. Uh, and so that kind of international cooperation is out there already, and they're making great strides. But if they don't have the support of consumers and the support of business, then you don't have enough political will to spend the real money uh, and time and energy that it's going to take to really come to terms with this global problem. So for consumers, the easy answer is to make sure that you're buying from a trusted source. So um, Whole Foods and some of these other large corporations have um, really invested in tracing their seafood supply chains. Uh, but you can also work with your local restaurants. Um, you can look for those labels like Fishwise, which is my personal favorite <laughs> as a label, <laughs> um, but also Marine Stewardship Council. Gulf of Maine has their particular label, which is a good one as well. Um, but ultimately, that is a privilege. Uh, to be able to choose your seafood. And it only is really getting at that high-end component of seafood fraud. If we want to deal with seafood fraud across the continuum, and if we want to do it in a, in a just and equitable way, then we have to go through that process of working together with business and with the government. So for consumers, what you need to do is put pressure on business to put pressure on government to overcome the problem of seafood fraud. You can do it in your personal life if you have that privilege, and that's awesome. But if we really want to tackle the problem at its large scale that it is, we need to work together and we need to work through um, regulation and cooperation.